that this here is um, you know, you know, a little way but you can just see here see that rock there that big rock yeah, just exposed because yes. you've got the lake long and uh, low enough yes not as low as it wants that that's that rock's got its own special name and that That is where the um, the uh, woman and her husband hid when Panui Pa was attacked. Came from this uh, sleeping cave and um, from an eater and uh, they um, attacked that Panui Pa. <laughs> Fano Fano e no mai ano kitiao o Topo Moana record keepers Jeffrey Addison here on Friday the 18th of March with Perry Fletcher and Te Whaitaima Te Whare on camera. Oh, and we're here at Whare Waka. Okay, what's in the name? We're at uh, Whare Waka Point. We're down the road edge. And once again, uh, working with reserves and people and concepts and development in altering uh, natural landscapes and historic features and that, uh, the eyes and minds are to uh, stop roads going through the middle of things and, and to try and protect uh, some of the cultural features, even if the natural ones have gone for easement of uh, inconvenience of uh, council uh, lawnmowers. Uh, we're at a... Um, significant place that we're exposed, we're wind exposed, uh, blown, uh, sterile uh, soils miles around. The only feature inland is, a um, little distance inland is the cave cave pit and this this formed the uh, route uh, from the other side of the lake, the bay here and, and people going in, into um, either, either south to Waitanui or walking through to the um, uh, walking through to access to the um, uh, Bir Burial Mountain and uh, Pepe, with Pepe being the big bush and reserve outside Tauhara, the Tauhara Mountains. Uh, so Fori, Fori Waka. Now, uh, where's the Fori, Jeffrey? Right here. Right here. Uh, we'll go over here. Um, I think you're okay seeing the door was on that side. Oh. <laughs> this is the so this is the This is uh, from the, the uh, see, see the rim? Yes. See the rim? Big Fori Puni. Big Fori Puni site. And this uh, how it cultivated and, and accommodated uh, people here. Um, a great, great feature. A rare on the side and exposed area of the lake. But then you've got to tie in the name and the feature, Fori Waka. So it wasn't a fari for Waka? No, no, the Wakas, the Wakas and that were used to come over and the lake was a lot lower. They had to walk outside. And at the other side of us out here was the big um, fisheries. And the people used to associate themselves to um, the areas that um, what we now call Jerusalem Bay, Hiruharama, and coming over here for all, all the Tauhara blocks and all, all the hapu and that here. They got the smallest awards, and, but, uh, but it was this block and the peace and association that they had with us as the hereditary movements and cross crossover places. Ngāti Rohoto got this block, doesn't necessarily say it was a Rohoto person that did this, but uh, Rohoto III is buried at uh, Waipii Bay, so uh, that's uh, uh, that, that's uh, Rohoto the uh, third. Just to speak to this Whare Puni site, most of the ones we've been to have been like two metres. That's two right, metres. Uh, but you're you're looking at you're differentiating between Whare and Whare Puni, the superior large meeting house size. You know, by the time Captain Cook came, these were the larger size, superior, larger meeting house uh, places they had. Fori Puni, a Fori Fori Puni site. But as long as someone has got their eyes on the place 
if someone doesn't uh, go and um, go go and modify it for some recreation or other use. What's to stop that happening? Ah, uh, well, it's stopped till now. Now, do I hand the uh, guarantee and the guardianship on when the reserves ranger got all excited about this and promptly with his other things I was trying to support him with lost lost his uh, job. But um, anyway, you know. No, I was say oh, oh, they had all these banks and that down there all modified for mine. All all the natural banks were completely um, obliterated. They came down here, and um, now it was just uh, so many things. Any decisions or recommendations he was doing was just getting countered. Quite pronounced, doesn't it? Oh, it is. It is. You know, you can imagine it back in the first days. Had a roof all the way down. A roof and this big, sort of big slept, beams. Slept a lot of people. Lot. It's like 12 metres by 12 metres. It's, it's a significant structure. There's things like this at the Historic Places Trust. All they thought was was the modern uh, things down Tongariro. And they just had a blank for taking people to see anything for their field visits. But, um, it would be great to find out if this had a name, if Whare Pune had some, something as big as this, you'd think there'd be a record of its name. Well, so not necessary. Like the um, the uh, dispossession, musket wars, land courts, uh, different people, a lot of people were displaced and were just fighting to retain where, where they yes. happened to be um, at. When, how, how old do you think this might be. Is there any way of gauging how, how far back this site? I've, I've seen no physical evidence, but mind you, this has been modified as reserved for years, years and years. But, um, but how, however, I'm, um, however, when we saw you saw um, Hartaby, the odd open area, but this, this is uh, this is uh, something else, isn't it? Very distinctive. Mm. Once you see it, you can't unsee it. You know, <laughs> in in terms of yeah, it, it, it's not a natural formation. Oh no, no. They, they heap things up all sides. I um when I e emailed uh, you, uh, Fitama, there was a tremendous crash and boom and bang, and I thought one of the Ukrainian uh, rockets missiles had knocked in the, down the road, and chap had dropped a metal container. What a noise! He had to get something else, pick it up, and get it to where he was delivering it. But that uh, made a big um, noise, like an explosion crater. But this is, is almost what it looks like, like it's a mini crater that something's mm -hmm. you know, landed like a, a rock. Um, <laughs> when I first got GPS and they were uh, terribly inaccurate, even uh, standing near a tree, I used to always go to this trig to work and set coordinates. Off this, um, off this uh, trig mark. But, um, so, the old Māori, Whariwaka is remembered because Ngā Toroi, Toroi Rangi threw a. That, see, see, I see over there where that uh, mooring thing is. Yes. Now, for years, when I first came here, I, um, when I first came here, you could still see it. You could still see it sticking out of the lake. So, here, Faitama, that mountain over there, Tahara, on top of Mount Tahara, top peak on the right, Natoro, Natoro picked a, picked a, um, threw a spear all the way from there. And it hit the lake out here. You could for years see that uh, says spear or his tree sticking upside down, sticking up. And um, yeah, even uh, I even recall it. Have you seen photos of it? Oh, I never took a photo. I never took a photo. But um, but uh, for years they could still see it. Well, I, I recall it. 
and that's where he threw it with a mighty throw, he threw it, and when it hit the water, water gushed out and, and created the lake. So here we are into the um, realm of mythical, the, uh, the, the uh, myth, mythical thing. Out there, you used to see the tree, tree um, sticking, sticking out up. There was a lot of rocks and a lot of rocky shawls and that here before the uh, raising of the thing, the um, the uh, lake, lake here. But um, across the other side, you see the old lake level height, the old height, like we had it more pronounced it for Kaipo Bay. Yes. That line, uh, line uh, runs runs uh, through at the same height, but. Um, What's, what's confused, what's uh, so confusing nowadays is that, um, that uh, Māori, certain Māori, Waitanui, always Waitanui, yes, uh, they are bound to declare that uh, from across the, uh, across the bay there, uh, ro, uh, ro, uh, Rohoto swam from there with a baby on her back. And she so she swam across and she came here, and then she ran down to uh, relatives at uh, Lake Ruto, uh, Lake Ruto, uh, Naira there. And, um, but Nick Wall assured us that in fact it was from Lake Ruto, Nairo that she swam across that way. Now Darky Downs, when he was doing something of Maori Affairs uh, rep, uh, he said, oh, she swam from the end of the lake up here. See a different telling? The historic reality, Faitama, is she never did that swim. She never made that swim, and she no way she carried a baby on her back. But try and tell all these people their different stories and accounts. What she did, and well, I'll show you, I'll just show you again. Uh, did I, show, I showed you the rock on the other side, didn't I? The special where she hid behind with her husband. Yes. 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 And that's where she and her husband came out and they were killed. She never made a swim here. This is a John Grace who took from Cohen, who took from Pub Talk by someone else of Waitanui, I won't, won't name, in 1930 to get that story for this time to outdo the Tutankai story. Prior to that, elders and that uh, had no such stories in their history. What they did have was Rohota was killed over there with a husband, and and but the, the baby was with another family, being looked after separately and lived and survived. Too hard that. Let's get a Tutankai story for the uh, tourists and, and come up. Then John Grace uh, preaches it in his gospel, and um, and so now they vow and declare that the swim. But as I say. So this isn't what you were talking about. Uh, no, no. This was uh, when uh, Anne wanted um, Anne wanted a park, a uh, history, and that. The only thing that ended up was uh, just um, just uh, this. Many years later, so they don't, they don't have they say no to something. Signs on the other side were removed, giving you history. You know where we were on the other side, Rututu there, mm. and yet and yet they can. Put signs and remove signs, and it's, it's no consistency. But the thing with this is that um, with this is that um, you're not allowed to step foot on the island. Yet everyone could, right, right up to the um, 19, uh, 2000 year 2000, and and yet um, and yet they had had uh, people uh, scouring the island for days looking for a person. So I assumed he was on the island and not uh, drowned. It's just an assumption, isn't he? Missing on the island. Could have slipped off the boat or drowned in the lake or anything. No, uh, he swam over with flippers and they found his flippers and snorkeling gear on the island so they so they figured he got there but then they didn't find any signs of him leaving the island. See there's your white white cliffs over there showing quite nicely. So there's, there's potential for another village over there, isn't there? Another another hobbit-like village. What, at Lake Rotonaro? At White Cliffs, you know, because there's a lot of good hardened pumice banks there, I think. 
Yeah, but it's only lake and it's all, all banks and slopes. There's very little. There's only about one place there that was suitable for any any um, any uh, habitation. And was it habitated? Uh, well, I've got the name of where it was. Just a small area, just a few people. At, at White Cliff. Uh, halfway, halfway along there. Between like Rotongaio and Hatipi. Um, uh, between the beginning and the end of the White Cliffs. And are there um, features there? Uh, not really, not much. So we'd have to make them contemporarily if we wanted them to be there. Well, there's no access there really at all. What do you mean? Well, you can't, you can't, you can't go there. You can't, there's no access there. My son's walked along there. Oh, I know he's walked there, but that's not uh, taking in vehicles and. Oh no, there's, you have to go by boat if mm. you want to actually. I, I've paddled all along there and, and landed at a few different places, but I never found anywhere that I thought looked like. No, no, it was just this one small place that was um, higher, higher up. There, there is a spring along there that may have been where they. they... Well, can, if this is all they've got for the history of this area, it's not much, is it? It's just being anachronistic to put a little a little bronze plaque commemorating the disappearance of somebody. I mean, it's weird in a way, hey? There's a Māori history and they've got a plaque about it in England. Somebody, and that's it. So what with the notices and histories of uh, anything that ne never happened, whether they're right or wrong, and and um, did you get that? So is that the only feature that we've seen? That's that the only. Off here? That's the only feature. I hardly was losing my job over. I would have thought. Oh no, no! All this, all this, and banks and that came hard, and that, and all that was all scuttled right down here. So he yeah. wanted to keep the natural features as a natural feature thing, scenic feature. Too hard. <laughs> Well, it's all exactly right, too hard to mow. Right, this is Jeffrey Perry in Whaitaima from Farewaka.
seed. It doesn't work in the real age. And it's the the disparity to the people, particularly when you start bringing in pre-Maori and everything else, that were never there. The the first people, the only people that were here, were were Maori themselves. They were great voyagers. But people have been very active for years trying to prove there has to be other people and superior races, particularly white ones, that were here before Maori. And that's what they're trying to push with the Kaimanawa Wall and, that's and everywhere all just else. For years. And, and when you speak to some of those people, they've not the least been interested in a thousand years of Maori occupation. No. I've spoken to these people promoting the books, the journals, the literature for all this pre Maori stuff. And when I speak to them physically, uh, and they're not interested in any, not one sentence of what Maori have done here for the last thousand years. Oh, we want to see the Egyptians came or the Bronze Age people or something else. And, and so that's not a genuine uh, research or interest or anything. It's a, it's a cuckoo land bias. And unfortunately, some Maori themselves would say, oh, to think we came from Egypt because someone from America says we uh, have with us the latest book of theory. And so it's, um, it's um, mm. quite different. See, that might be entertained about the first, um, the first um, anthropology department. People might fantasise with that. But by the time they've done a paper or two, they're into the real world of hard factual evidence, as well as all the records and that. And these things uh, belong to a pseudo-scientific realm that appeals because of that. So the, the mythology and the teachings and the teaching mythology I clink you up Pihanga with Tauhara to Edgecombe to Taranaki and, um, and uh, with the mountains here. But that was part to do with Maori law and the Maori law that used to explain the, um, the landscapes and the islands and, uh, and the natural features. But that was, uh, that's quite different to the people who associated these things as explanation with, uh, with their, their, themselves and relating to the land and their, their families. So you, how much of the whakapapa have you got from Nata Rangi's uh, sisters and, and, and their whakapapa and the families descended from them? None of them uh, or, or originate to any of these um, any of these calling of the fires or anything else. And you'll find... So his sisters were actually lived here in Aotearoa. They didn't one of them, they lived they did life at Rotorua, went back. That's why you got to um, and Hohungaroa. And that's uh, that's where Kaingaroa was named after. The Kaingaroa? Yes. Was named after her. Yes. But she went back to Rotorua. But her name wasn't Kaingaroa, it was No, no. Kaingaroa. No, it was her, her meal she had on the Kai, the Kai. Oh. The Kai, the yes. meal. So she she bucked around with the food while the other party <coughs> were leaving. And they chastised her for being delayed. But that's an ordinary person. Yes. Why did she need to have a meal and a feed and that if she was the supernatural to call up fires and everything else? Do you think it makes it a much more interesting story being embellished like that? If he had stood up the top of Tongariro and threw off a, a tree, it would only have gone five feet or ten feet. It wouldn't have gone five kilometres and landed in, mm. uh, in the lake outside. Well, that Fari was Waka. my reference at Fari Waka there. Yeah, so, so, so bring, to me, bring, that's bring in the mythology in that, but don't bring in, in the stories and tradition, but some of these things you can trace coming in from other regions and being localised, and similar stories and accounts and similar names and accounts and the or- or- origins of the names.